Hi everyone, Jan Fursden here with Fursden House. I apologize for my croaky throat. I've had a head cold this past week and I'm over it except for the croaky throat. So if I sound a bit like a frog, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to share this last um, ephemera folder. This is a special order for Jennifer. Jennifer, I hope you enjoy this. Um, I've made it a little bit different um, and it's a bit larger than the other ones have been. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. Um, I forgot the measuring thing. So this one is 10 inches by 12 inches with about one and three quarter inch spine. But instead of three sides, this one is four sides. I've uh, closed it with this beautiful black grow grain ribbon. And to keep that ribbon looking pretty, the easiest thing is just to slip it off this way. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm not that great at tying bows. Um, I've covered it in this fabulous um, twall. I love twall. Blue twall and black twall are my two favorites. And um, this is just about all the black twall that I have left. You can see there. Whoops, I've got things popping out already. They're excited to be on film. <laughs> so let's go ahead and open it up. Now, well, that's just a real good start, isn't it? Where'd it go? All right, come on. there now we're going to do this again so there it is the others had three of these well this one and it's kind of hard to get it all in the in the camera here let me put you back in there you little skunk but this is one two and then three and four so you can <laughs> it's kind of large but um, it folds up in a nice, neat uh, space. And I've done these thanks to Elaine Larkin. Elaine, I appreciate this. Um, she believes, as, as I do and as we all should, to try and recycle as much as we can. And she had these books that were sample books of where she worked. Um, they had these sample books of things that they held, like carpet samples and various and sundry things. And... Um, at our last retreat, I got several of them, and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them. But then I decided I wanted to make ephemera folders. So, anyway, here we go. Jennifer, I, I hope you like this. I, I put more handmade items in this one than I did the others, because it was a special request. So, I hope you enjoy them, uh, Jennifer. Let's see if I can get most of it in here. So, here, I've done something a little special. I have created these. They're like wax seals, but they're not wax. They're glue. Colored glue sticks. And you just glue them down onto something. And you can use them as if they were a seal. And I've put all of them with a J for Jennifer. So there are those four. And there are more. And this one, you can see, I couldn't get it off of the paper underneath but again you're just going to glue that down and put that on there you can put it on letters you can use them as closures all kinds of things but let me show you the other ones while we're on that same i got some new colors of glue sticks in and i wanted to use them so there they are again i just love how they turned out and I like these because wax tends to crumble with age and tends to crumble anyway. And um, the glue doesn't. It's rather pliable and you can glue it down. And um, for instance, if you say if you wanted to use an envelope, but you wanted to reuse it. Well, what you do is you glue this just that bottom part right there, not the whole thing. And then you can just kind of flip that up and under like so and it'll hold it in place so that's what I like to do with them you can also put them on letters just to make them look really neat and stuff and here we have some little these are little envelopes and they're double pockets you can see there's one and two and that's just using up old book pages I got that idea from Camellia Craft Designs, and the basic thing you're doing, you're using one sheet, but it has to be a square. So these are a four-inch square, 
and these small ones again they're they're also double um, are three inch squares and it's just a matter of folding it so that was so cool I'll put that link below if I can I think that was who, it was, who did it I'm terrible about remembering things so much going on right now um, this is just a tiny little <laughs> a baby journal or a baby little notebook whatever you want to call it I just think they're sweet and again using up scraps and I got a new um, some die cuts and I had so much fun with it and these are what I've come up with and they are so pretty And as you can see, they're rather fragile. So I wouldn't try and use these for pockets unless you put them on top of a piece of cardstock and then I uh, did it. But I want to show you something. Let's see, where is that one card? Yeah, here's one. So if you have a tag, you can just glue these down to the corner and look how pretty that is. Just gorgeous. If you want to use it for a pocket, you can glue this down onto a piece of cardstock and then cut the cardstock around it but I just like the way that they are just like that so again I, I enjoyed that it was fun to make and I'm hoping that Jennifer enjoys it and we have some butterflies here I've got to stop and take water every now and then for my throat because it I get so dry and croaky I love those little things they're great for gluing down and then I've got a few you see this is one of the clusters that I made just using old book pages bits and pieces of scrap vintage button vintage lace there some of my favorite green ribbon and here I also got some new die cuts for for um, butterflies so here are several here that are just the plain ones. And then here are some more. I thought these would be gorgeous on, on a journal page. And I did them all in pretty colors. Or on a tag, you know, whatever. I just think they're so pretty. Whoops, I got him upside down. And then this color. So again, I wanted just a little bit, something different. And um, so I hope you like them, Jennifer. I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay, so let's go on to the next. Let's see, let's take care of this big pocket here. I put in some um, Tim Holtz Instant Ancestors, I think is what they call them. Paper dolls, whatever. They're great making tags and stuff, which I've also made some in here. These are two uh, of my flowers that I've pressed from this spring. Now, I've gone ahead and sewn all the way around it. And um, these are orchids from um, my husband's orchid plants. And what I do is, you can decorate them more if you'd like. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. just depends. And then you can do glue three sides down and use it as a pocket from the side or, or whatever. But I just love those colors. And here we have, I, I was using my die cut machine, can you tell? So the, I love these. These are great for their pockets. And what you do, there's a score line here and here and here. You just fold that down, glue on the, on the piece that's been folded under, put it on your page, and then you've got pockets right there. So, all slightly different. I just think it's really neat. This is one of my last, I think I have one more, and it was my favorite, so I'm keeping it. And this one was my second favorite. Um, that is just a little bit, that came from a fan. And uh, the fan was broken, and I thought, well, I'm not going to throw it away. I just think they're pretty. So, and it can slip down over a page, and it's just a, a pretty little boot. I call them Windsor boots because they are fashioned after some actual fabric that we, that my mother-in-law purchased from uh, 
a lady who had purchased fabrics from the Windsor Castle after it had caught fire, and they had um, they had to get rid of a lot of the fabrics that were extra because the things had been damaged. So they got rid of some of the pieces, and she got some of the fabrics, and so I was able to make some boots out of um, the paper instead of the fabrics. I do have some in, in fabric. They're beautiful, but this is, again, using Tim Holtz uh, Instant Ancestors. Got a little string there. And that's just using up scraps. You can put a little cheesecloth underneath it. Turns out really well. And here we have another one. Again, Tim Holtz. Let's see if I can get all this back in here now without too much trouble. Okay, in we go. Mm. Those little things. Okay, here we have more things that I've made. This is um, from my garden. This is a maple leaf, a Japanese red maple. And I've just used one of Tracy Fox's um, botanical frames. This I used with scrap. I've just put some clusters of fabric and some tiny, these are antique buttons. So sweet. They're so tiny. And the, uh, the original thread is still in them. <coughs> Excuse me. And then on the reverse, some antique German um, music paper. And then inside, it's just some paper here. And all I did, I had strips of this paper and I just sewed them right up. And then you can hang this over the top of a page or the side and you've got perfect de decoration for both sides of your journal. And then these two things I made. Um, and I am embarrassed to say that I cannot remember the lady's name that I got this idea from. She made two for me, or one for me, and I thought they were so sweet, so I made some for myself. And I am so sorry, I, I'm i a blank right now, but I will put that name underneath. Um, oh, I hate it when I do that. My brain just goes mush. But they were so sweet. And um, she, like I said, she made me one. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're so pretty. So I thought, okay, I'll make some. So that was fun. Okay, let's fold this one up and then you can see my maker's mark here. Alrighty, what do we have in here? We have, again, more things that I've made myself. This is, um, this just slips over the top of a page. There's a video where I show how I, I can explain how I did that. And, just a nice little way of using up scraps. This one as well. You can just glue it down. You can leave the top unglued so you can have a pocket there. You have tuck spots in here if you'd like to use it like that. It's up to you. And there are two of those. Great way of using up scrap pieces. And this is just a little booklet. Again, using up scrap pieces. I love it when I can use up scrap pieces. We get so many of them in such small sizes, but I've come up with all kinds of ways, getting tons of inspiration for people um, on the uh, on YouTube. These are from a wedding dress that was totally destroyed when I purchased it. Well, it wasn't totally destroyed, or I couldn't have gotten these off of them, but um, I, I managed to get it for a very good price. They're appliques. They've got pearls on them. And uh, so it, I, no, I did not destroy a good wedding dress. And there's some more. These are great for putting in journals to, isn't that beautiful? Just lovely. You can put them on journal cards, whatever. All right, come on, lay down. And here we go. I've made some more 
These are tags inside the little um, glassine bags. I've just put a little amber bead there. This is vintage seam binding. And then one of those um, butterflies that I showed you earlier. Same thing here. And then these, again, I'm playing with my my digital, or not my digital kits, my die cuts. And they're graduated tags. I thought they were really neat. But you could tie them all together with one bit of um, a ribbon or a, even a, a brad and have them kind of swivel. I thought that'd be really cool. It'd be a neat way of doing it. Okay, let's close this. Open it up here. Whoops, we've got a, a stray pearl from somewhere. Put him over here. <laughs> okay, these are what I call um, doily pockets. They've got a blank piece of paper inside them. The others, I don't think I had paper inside them. Now, can I get it back in there without driving myself crazy? I'm always looking for ways to... Um, working with doilies because they're so pretty but they're so fragile it's it's not easy to come up with ways but all this is is a round doily and i just folded it over on its sides and glued this on top i kept a piece of um cellophane underneath so that when i glued it down it wouldn't stick to the back and i've made three separate ones here and each one of these has uh, paper in there it's so pretty i just i love doilies they're so pretty, so delicate. All right, come on. Okay, let's see what we've got in here. <clears throat> so this is at, whoops, turn it upside down. This is actually designed so you can put it inside a journal if you want. And uh, this is also from Camellia Craft Designs. Just a pocket there and a pocket here. And then on each end, another pocket. So that's that. And then this is Dakota Mock Vervain. I got this in Fort Worth, Texas and um, dried it and put it in my, uh, in one of the Tracy Fox botanical frames. These are just different folds of paper that I've done. I've got a couple of different sizes. Here I have, I like these. These are really, now this one's a large one. This one's using an antique piece of paper. I think from the 1940s, I think. May, 1944, yes. So this is the actual paper. And you glue here, here, and here. You leave the back open if you want. And you have one pocket, two pockets, three pockets and four pockets there now that's a larger one and then here are smaller ones and these actually have more pockets so you again glue here here and here leave the back open so you have a pocket on the back that's one two three four and five so the small ones have five pockets I'm not quite sure how I ended up doing five and four but who knows this is another fold, it's called a tuxedo pocket. And I've just taken a decorative piece of paper, just one, one sheet of paper. You fold up the edges here, and then I've glued them so that they're a pocket now. And I've just trimmed a tiny bit out of the center so that it wouldn't bunch up. So after you fold that up, you uh, bring it together in thirds, like so. And then you just bring down the corners. So that's really pretty. And again, that's called a tuxedo pocket. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are using, this is uh, antique music paper. And I've just used a, a vintage piece of uh, crocheted lace or whatever you want to call it there. And again, you would put glue here here and here leave the back open and you have one pocket two pockets three pockets and four pockets 
and this one has a, a an applique on it and this one has one pocket two pockets and three pockets again different sizes so that is all that uh, is in here now we're going to get to the other stuff because yes Jen gets kind of carried away I had a lot of fun doing these and um, I do hope you like them Jennifer um, and if anyone has any questions or anything do please give me a uh, a notice on the on, in the comment section so again just closes up like this and these are to be stored right side up because obviously if you don't things can fall out so anyway so I'm gonna put this aside for right now and now we're gonna get into some additional ephemera that I've just included I'm just gonna kind of go over go over it real quick with everyone this is beading that has been crocheted and it has little clear beads on it and I just thought it was so pretty my grandmother used to do that this is not from her um, but she used to do that and try to teach me and I was hopeless couldn't do it I cannot crochet I cannot knit I can embroider and, and I even do cut work cut embroidery cut work embroidery I'll get it out in a minute but I couldn't do that here's some more beading it's real pretty there um, a pretty part of that wedding dress that I've just cut out large appliques from. Some um, some rosettes. Now what I do is I just cut right down the center and then I have small ones. You can use it like this though, however, however you wish. We have some um, sari silk. That's great for uh, using ties on top of um, cards journal tags things like that here's some pretty lace I got this at the last um, the retreat we went to sweet lady I bought that from so sweet Kathy Kathy Wyatt thank you Kathy here we have black velvet ribbon oops got some dust on it there and let's see here's some more beading beautiful bronze color and I'm gonna put this other stuff in here as well kind of keep it all together this is some more from the wedding dress and it has lots of pearls and I just take those pearls off and use them for all kinds of stuff just decorating things here we have a little box that I thought would be nice if you wanted to do a little diorama on it and then here, I hope you like this, Jennifer. I, I like to include a piece of jewelry, and I kept looking at this, and for some odd reason, I kept thinking, I like this. I really do. Um, so I hope you like it. If not, you let me know, and I'll send you a different one. But I just, I think elephants are so majestic. I just, I think they're gorgeous. I'm always looking on um, Instagram at the different uh, reels of elephants, and I just think they're amazing. So there's that. <clears throat> I have a little um, booklet, A Cozy Christmas Tea by Sandy Lenham Linum Clow. And it's just a real pretty little booklet. And I thought, well, it's almost Christmas. Has a little recipe or two in there. Here we have a, a piece of, um, oh, what do we call these? Um snippet rolls and this was made by a sweet friend of mine and um and i'm now i'm going blank again annette duh annette made this one and uh, i have lots of i've used almost all of it up and i had this one small piece left so i thought i would go ahead and include it and what i'll do is i'll just cut snippets off put them on the top of journals do whatever they're just it's fun to work with and then here we have, let's see, we have two keys, and we have three book plates, and they're little tiny screws there, and we've got 
two of those and a little cross. I think that's called a Greek flurry cross. F-L-E-U-R-Y, I think. I could be wrong on that. A little crown. Another little crown. Oh, there's three of those. Here's a little bead dangle. And then we have the fleur de lis in two different kinds there. So let's get these put up. I'm just gonna I want to put them up now because I don't want pieces coming up missing. And that's how my life usually goes. So I'm not gonna do it that way. And now we have, let me kind of rearrange some stuff here. I have some original pages, butterflies, and some more butterflies. Aren't those gorgeous? Just beautiful. So you can cut these up for ephemera. This came from the book, let me see. Oh, goodness. Where's the book? Where's the book? I think it's called Butterflies of the World. Anyway. And there's some... Um, Original page is also from some uh, book about toadstools. And here we have original pages. These are some of my favorites. The, um, let me see, it's called the Concise British Flora in Color. They make great tags, cards, you name it. So beautiful. And I've put in several pages there. And again, these are original pages. You make pockets out of these, whatever. And these are from a book, uh, The World of Audubon, I think is the name of it. And again, these are original pages. Isn't that beautiful? I hope I'm remaining in, in focus. Now's a heck of a time to realize that. These are original pages. And it's... I have to find the name of the book on that one. What is the name of the book on that one? These are the country flowers of an Edwardian lady. This is not uh, by um, Edith Holden. These are a different. So the country flowers of an Edwardian lady. Just beautiful. And then here we have pages from Edith Holden. Um, Nature Notes of a, an Edwardian Lady and Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. And again, these are original pages. And there's that one. And that sweet little fold. Wild Hyacinth. I love Hyacinth. And then toadstools. Whoops. Okay, let's see what else do we have. A little bit more, and then we'll be finished. So in here, that's uh, an envelope or um, a bag that's been printed. It's a vellum. Isn't that pretty? And I have a little booklet here using up scraps. Here I have, this is just buttons that I've had and just a little nice little notepad there. I've made a little um, booklet here. Now this one has a pocket that I've left empty on the front and on the back. And in the center I've just put tea stained paper. This is a um, an antique postcard. Let's see, foreign two cents. I was hoping it had a, this is a German postcard, and it doesn't have a date on it, but it is, uh, it is antique, and it is the original. I love it when they have the writing on. I'm, I wish you many happy returns of the day, Auntie. Lovingly yours, Lenora. That's sweet. And then here we have two uh, postcards that are, new and it's of Paris different maps of Paris 
Those make great pockets. We have some Edith Holden postcards. Whoops. We have by Carl Larson. I love his work. These are blank. And there we go. Have it. Just some amazing pictures that he's done. And here we have, um, what is this? Dame's Rocket. Um, I dried this, or pressed it rather, earlier this spring. And that's using a frame that I got from a digital kit from Nikki Attigan. And Musings by Nikki. Oh, neat. And then three of these small sizes. They're not CDs because a CD wouldn't fit in there, but I'm not sure what they hold. But I love the smaller size, too. They've already been um, tea stained. And last but not least, this is the last one. Several years ago, mm, I'm thinking maybe five years ago, I created, it's called paper cloth. And you lay some paper down and you keep layering the paper down and layering it with glue. And, and, and then you have this giant sheet and then you cut it up and do whatever you want with it. This was before I was doing journals. And so now I would cut it up and make cards out of it, but I was making bookmarks and then I backed it with some felt and I used all these beautiful little strands. And this is the last one. Um, and it's really neat because it actually feels like leather and it's uh, very sturdy. And um, I thought it'd be nice for Jennifer to have that. So it's my last one and it's going to a good home. So, and all I did was just take scraps of paper from magazines and things like that and um, just kind of made a collage and then just went kind of wild with the, the what well, I think it's called um, not free stitching well maybe it is called free stitching I can't remember but just kind of go all over the place and it was a lot of fun to do so anyway there it is um, if you have any questions please just uh, let me know in the comments below I look forward to hearing from you. And again, I apologize for my croaky voice. Um, but uh, there it is. I hope you're all having a blessed day. I'll talk to you.